matter what socioeconomic background people come from, doesn't matter the colour. You know, I'm very much very, very pro-black, doesn't mean that I'm anti-white, but I do know in my healing journey there were many, many people that didn't look like me, but there was a sense of solidarity within those their spaces. Um, and I try to promote that at the same time, letting those other people know you've got to respect other people's truth of their story, <clears throat> regardless of where they come from, whether they've got a hijab on, whether they haven't. Everybody's pain story is their truth. And just because somebody's pro that and wants to support that doesn't mean they're anti anybody else's stuff because we can actually be different together and create hands and links to kind of just help each other through stuff. Man, woman, it doesn't matter. A lot of the isms that are out there are there to divide us because then that's a better way of controlling society. I don't believe in all that. And after my traumatic experience, I had like the doctor's like what's going on i'd gone through a health check for life insurance um, and everything was fine they're like are you doing well your blood sugar your cholesterol you're eating well your weight for your height everything your skin everything looks good and then she takes my blood pressure and she stares at me she's like you're right and i'm like yeah she's like breathe that's what i am I, you do yoga, I do breathing, I do, you know, deep breath in, out, count to ten, do all of that kind of stuff. She's like, okay, the reading is either machine is machine's not working or something. So she sent me an emergency referral to go and see my doctor go to accident and emergency because my blood pressure was so high. I never had blood pressure. I was that person in my previous employment that used to win the fittest employee of the year thing and always... 0.3% chance of having any illnesses and my blood pressure was so high and I thought to myself that it's a combination of things um, and then I had to go and see a specialist because of it and no disrespect to the medical professional in the room he was like oh you're from the you're of African descent it's normal you, you just gotta cope and deal with it and I was like huh it just is and then I started to have conversations with other people and I'm like, yeah, I've got high blood pressure. Yeah, I've got high blood pressure, a lot of people. And then we were talking about the microaggressions that, you know, black people face or people of darker hue face, brown people, whichever way you want to represent yourself. And what we face on a daily basis, which we're, we're conditioned to just accept and to just cope with. Um, and so this is a blood pressure machine. Um, and what I've done is I've thought of how, you know, you use a blood pressure to measure your pressure of blood and how in the world, the core of the world, the world's core, especially of people from this part of the planet, we face microaggressions on levels till we're just accepting of it. And these are some of the reasons why I think a lot of people have high blood pressure. They say that it's food. I know so many people who eat well who are impacted by this. So what I've done is I've used the regular wording that you'd find in a blood pressure machine and I've slightly changed them because this normally says die, die, die something or else, but I thought of dichotomy, which is the isms and schisms that we face in the world. This normally says pulse in the machine, but it's actually repulse, 100% repulsive to me, what we face as people. Um, and then normally it says um, um, sense on there and I put artificial sense because they think it's sensible to have microaggression and normally it has like a brand of the um, blood pressure machine but I've actually called the, the, the pressure machine the world order that's what we face as, as, as people and then the, the power is actually the pressure power they're applying pressure on us constantly to accept stuff that we shouldn't have to accept and then so what's happened is the energy of that, the heat of the world is forced through us on a daily basis and these are two people who are being totally impacted societally, what happens. And this is kind of representative of blood, the darkness. This is a bit of a dark piece. Um, and that's how I feel about the world order. And then I've put, is the world order? And then slowly here on a blood pressure machine. The only reason why I know so much about one is because I have a reader at home that I use it quite regularly to check that my blood pressure is okay. Um, and it's world healthcare. And that's how I feel, so that's quite a dark piece. But that's how I feel that, um, you know, these things happen in society. So it was just one of those moments I was like, the doctor just said to me, oh, there's nothing we can do. It just is people from the Caribbean and Africa. That's what you have. It just is. And I'm thinking to myself, is that really what you're just saying to me? Like, that just is. You just, you just got to deal with it. 
So yeah, that's what this piece is. Some parts of my um, art are inspiring and empowering and other parts talk about the reality of the world that we face, which can be quite dark. And I don't think there's anything wrong with us ident you know, looking at parts of the dark parts of to our experience, but we don't have to become it. We can observe it and then think of a solution and a work around it and have conversations in, 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 in safe environments in a healthy way to talk about some of these things and offer each other solutions of how you can transition out of that and stuff so yeah